everyone. Uh, today I will be going over my final project for CSIS 10B, which is Java 2. I chose my project on a maze solver. What is my maze solver, or what is a maze solver? It's any series of algorithms that solves a given maze, obviously, but more specifically my maze solver uses a series of recursive backtracking calls to solve the maze. So what is recursive backtracking? Well it uses recursion so we should go over that first and recursion is just a way of splitting up a large problem into smaller problems. For example if you had three tunnels and one of those tunnels had a pot of gold at the end of it. You have tunnel A, B, and C. The gold is in tunnel C. So you decide first to go into tunnel A, but don't find anything. So using recursion, you say false for tunnel A. You move on to tunnel B. You also get a false. And then you reach tunnel C, and you reach the pot of gold, which would be your base case, and then you would return a true. So that's a very simple recursive backtracking type problem. I'll show you a sample for my maze. So I constructed a maze here. And in my maze, the way I decide which direction to go, I use the simple south, search south, then west, then north, then east. So we are going to start at the red square. And then we are going to hopefully be able to get to this gold square. So you also, the white space, imagine them as uh, walls. Because if we hit a wall, we don't want to search there, obviously. So starting on the red square, we are here. Is the base case met? No, obviously we want to reach the goal. We're, no, we're not nowhere near the goal. So we're going to search south, but that's a wall, so we're going to get a false. We're going to search west, okay? We mark it. We're going to search west again. Whoops, excuse me. We're going to search south first, then west. We get a wall again for south. Then we get to west, which is clear, so we go there. And then we go west again, or south, then west. So we're here. Then south, then west, then we're here. So we go south, wall, west, wall. So now we go north. And then we go south, but we've already been there. So we're going to say that's false. We're going to go west. Wall can't go there, so north. So then we do it again. South, marked, west, wall, so north. And then we do those calls until finally we get to our goal. But for instance, say instead of going southwest, northeast, I went south north, west, east. So south wall, north wall, west, good. And then we do that again. South no, north no, west yes. South no, north yes though. So now we're going up a dead end. South already done, so we go north. South already done, so we go north again. But we get a wall. We go west, we get a wall. We go east, we get a wall. So now we know this entire section is no good. So that is what the recursion, recursive backtracking is trying to do. We're trying to eliminate, we're searching, and if we find a dead end area, we just mark that, pretty much mark that whole section as no good. So then we go back down here, and then we keep following the maze up to our goal. Okay, I hope that example was enough. Um, so now we're going to look at my um, project folder in BlueJay. Um, so you're probably asking yourself, what is a maze for my project? And it's, what does it look like? So I'm using text files and then just using um, pounds as the walls and white space as um, open spaces. So this is what a maze looks like for me. And then I have a more elaborate version, much larger, a lot more um, potential dead ends. 
Okay, so we're going to do that now. So here's our maze. Um, we are going to make, we're going to be using double arrays to use, make a 2D array. That's basically what our maze is, is a 2D array. But we're going to have two 2D arrays. One that has, is being filled with characters that represents the maze itself. And then another 2D array that tells you whether or not that space has been explored. And that will be filled with booleans. So all the 2D array is filled with false or null. And then as we go to the spaces, we're going to put true in the spaces we've been. So if we get another instance of, let's pull back up that example again. So I'm here, say I go west first in this instance. And then I move again, and then say I check east, I already know I can't, that's not an applicable spot because this box has been checked as explored true. Okay, so going back here, and then we have another series of uh, variables right there. Um, we want to know where our last ro location is, row and column wise. So think of an XY plane. But we're using rows and columns in this instance. Okay, and this is how we are going to read in our maze into our um, char and booleans. So that's how we set up our dimensions. So back in our solve maze class, we um, take in an input file and then from that input file we get the dimensions and where the pounds and where the white space is. So now that we have our 2D arrays dimensions set we want to, this is another check, we want to make sure that no row, single row is longer than any other row or no column is longer than any other column. To, so we want a rectangle essentially. So that's a check for that. Um, so if we pass this test, we are going to fill the squares with what is inside the maze itself. So now that we have our array set up and filled with the applicable symbols, our maze is built. Now we have our other methods, our getters, like the height and the width of the maze, you want to get what's square, what's in that square, so say a white space or a pound, which would be a wall, or um, if we're using a treasure rather than the normal exit, where a treasure would be just a white space that the user inputs that isn't the actual exit to the maze, that would be an at sign, so if the at sign, if we're, the square is the at sign, you found the treasure, obviously. So that's another useful thing for get square. And then you have set explore. So making sure we are inside the maze before we check so we don't get an out of bounds error. And then once we check we're inside the maze, you want to set that explored square to true. Okay. Um, so we have another is explored, so we're making sure we're inside the maze. We are resetting our um, last column, our last is row and last is column to the current square. And then um, we are going to return true if the previously, if it's been previously visited and false if it hasn't. So that's just another um, helper method that uh, keeps track of where we've been and where we haven't been. And then this is our mark. And this is what helps us mark our way out of the maze once we find our base case, which is either the exit or the treasure. And we're going to mark our path with X's. 
Um, and then while we search, our ismarked method is going to be showing the path that we've been on with um, periods. And then we have a check for iswall. So we're obviously each time in most of these methods we're checking if we're inside the maze itself first. And then we are doing whatever the designated method calls for. So the wall, we check if we're inside the maze, set the our columns and rows correctly, and then we um, we return true. We return a wall, excuse me, if it is a wall, making sure we don't think walls are the escape route, essentially. And then we have our is exit, which does the same thing as is wall, and the exit is either is, is the at sign. Okay, so uh, here's our string builder, which um, takes the, um, it sets the dimensions according to the height and the width of the maze, and then we're going to add one to that so we don't append, append over append, <laughs> resulting in like a uh, out of bounds. So we use a string builder because it's we can actually append to this string um, which is much easier to work with than a normal string so um, we want to keep track of where the cursor is so last is row and last is column will tell us that so that's where our money sign is our cursor and then we have all the other cases where our at is the exit, pound is the wall, x is going to be the path out, period is going to be wherever we explored, and white space is where we haven't been explored. So that will print the progress of the, of the maze. Here's our check indices, so we're making sure we're inside the maze itself. And then we have a, just a standard sleep method that allows us to slow the animation of the printing because if we didn't have that it would just basically solve the maze so quickly that it would be hard to follow. Okay, so we're going to go look at our maze again just to get an idea. So if the user selects the starting point, we'll actually pull up the solve maze as well and we'll look at the maze at the same time. So we use the file read-in type me um, algorithm that we've been using for the past couple of labs and such. So the user inputs the, the file name. In this case, we want to start with maze one. And then we do the standard reading in a file. We've got the file not exception catch so we just read in the correct file and then uh, while it has the next line we read in the necessary data so then that's what the maze is being built on is the text itself from this read so we make a string file text and then that string is being fed into maze and off of that string the maze itself is being built with those two 2D arrays. Um, I'm running out of time here because I can only record for 15 minutes at a time. So I'll just try to finish up this, these two separate while loops very quickly. So we are also allowing the user to pick a start point, which can obviously not be a wall or outside of the maze itself. And then we're also letting them pick an end point or a treasure point. Um, the end point is a specific place where there's a, a white space at the end right here and if they pick any other point that's not a wall or outside the maze that's a treasure point and then we close this wall off so they can't inadvertently escape. So I'll see you guys in part B.